you want to know one of the hardest JRPGs on the PlayStation 2, you've come to the right place. Because today, I have gathered the 10 hardest JRPGs on the system that I have ever played. Are you ready? Then let's begin! Number 10, Final Fantasy XII. Dealing with skills, armor and magic spells can be tough if you don't know exactly what to do, because if that's the case, then you live through hell with Final Fantasy XII. The exciting attempt to emulate an MMORPG like its predecessor, Final Fantasy XI. That's right, this was the first main title not to be turn-based, it instead became an action, real-time strategy bastard that's a huge mofo when it comes to difficulty. It's just one of those games where if you don't know what to do and how to do it, it literally turns into a grind fest. At some parts of the game, I managed to survive by combining strategy and the use of skills and magic, but in others, I got my ass brutally kicked several times until I grinded for hours, raising my character from 5 to 10 levels just to barely have a chance. There are some serious design problems in this game, that doesn't make it bad in my opinion. It's still a rewarding experience to play, and a solid title that will make you feel satisfied every time you make some damn progress. Number 9 Grandia 3 Ever heard of difficulty spikes? Well, this game's the exact definition of that. It goes up and down whenever the hell it wants, especially in boss battles. Everything in Grandia 3 is good, even the story despite its negative feedback in North America. But the battle system, in my opinion, is the epitome of this series. Its turn-based mechanics, ultimately based on the time, distance and position of the characters, are absolutely amazing and perfected from previous titles in the series. However, it's unforgiving difficulty at certain points of the game, where even some of the random battles can be much tougher than some bosses, gives more infamy to it. Problem lies with some enemies being overpowered for your current level and some being 10 times faster than you. The spin-off, Grandia Extreme, was also tough as hell but it was called extreme for a reason, in order to abuse the battle system and keep fighting your way through. But in Grandia 3, this wasn't the point. It was no excuse, and it was even harder than the spin-off. Regardless, it's an excellent game, pretty underrated, that nowadays gets a lot of questionable hatred. Number 8 Valkyrie Profile 2, Silmeria. Being my absolute favorite game on the system, this one had to be on the list precisely because of the same reasons as Grandia 3. The difficulty spikes here during almost every single boss battle are excruciatingly painful. You will grind, you will die, you will grind again and maybe then you'll have a chance. Again, if you don't know what you're doing with the right equipment and skills, which are a major important aspect in this game, playing a very crucial role, it's still no walk in the park, but it at least becomes extremely fun and reasonably challenging. You will try over and over again simply because the story and the gameplay mechanics are amazing! And let's not forget that some of the dungeons can also be a huge pain in the ass, giving the same more difficulty than necessary at times. It's still a masterpiece in my opinion, but I'll definitely never forget the horrible situations it relentlessly put me through. Number 7. Grow Lancer Generations 
You know, the real title that should be on this pod is actually Grow Lancer 2 The Sense of Justice, but since the prequel to the series, that's also including in this two game collection, Grow Lancer 3 The Dual Darkness, is extremely hard as well, might as well share this damn place together! Seriously, these real time strategy muppets are tough as nails, with some missions that will literally blow your mind the wrong way. You don't know the meaning of frustration until you play at least the evil bastard that's Girl Lancer 2, with some battles that have special conditions to win, as if the developers made them that way on purpose just to piss you off. As much as I love these two titles, with all my heart and soul, belonging to one of my favorite RPG franchises of all time, I can see every single goddamn complaint about them and understand it to perfection. Just mix a little bit of luck with the ring system mechanics and also with some not so good game design here and there and you'll have a ridiculous experience of unforgettable difficulty. That's Girl Lancer Generations for you. Number 6. Rogue Galaxy When the entire game, and I mean the entire game, becomes an endless cycle of frustration, you then realize you're playing Rogue Galaxy. I love this game because story, graphics and gameplay mechanics are superb, despite having some of the toughest and most unfair spikes ever in the history of gaming. This game has a battle system dominated entirely by a high random encounter rate everywhere you go, that will leave you begging for Grandia 3 or Valkyrie Profile 2. Its awesomeness is going to be the only reason you'll keep trying despite having to fight battles that will drain your HP, kill your allies faster than a dart frog, and destroy your eyes with its atrocious camera movement. Over and over and over. Let's not forget about its long-ass dungeons that take you forever to realize where you need to go, so obviously you will get lost several times, fighting your back off until you finally reach your goal. Screw this game, man. I don't care how amazing it is or how much I enjoy it the first time, I'm never going back to it again. Number 5. Odin Sphere Odin Sphere, however, is another action RPG that I've come back too many times in the past. Not because I enjoy suffering, but because I absolutely love everything about it. The music, the characters, the story, the graphics, the art, the gameplay mechanics, and yes, it's awkwardly designed battle system that they apparently fixed on the remake for the PS3, 4 and Vita. That version, trust me, is nowhere near as hard as the original on the PS2. Here you will also get stuck in its ridiculous penalties of losing stamina after a few seconds of fighting, only to get brutalized by the enemy during your recovery time. Then, you'll get your ass kicked as many times as it takes you to come up with a strategy and stop button mashing your controller. What, you'll grind your characters and farm healing items? Sure, it'll help, only like 10% of the time. Trust me, it's a damn nightmare and a loathsome experience that will just nail you to your chair, bed, couch, or wherever the hell you might be playing from because of how addictive it is. Yep, it's a beautiful game, and you'll never give up on it. I know you will succeed. Yeah, I know you will. Number 4 this Gaia, Hour of Darkness. Oh boy, now we're getting into the most infamous games on the PS2. This Gaia, Hour of Darkness, the Nipponichi software game that changed strategy RPGs forever. This Gaia has another name, you know, Grindfest. No other game is more fitting than this to represent the term, because that's what this is all about, grinding, leveling up, abusing the battle mechanics, getting the rarest weapons, some people even go as far as to level up just the main character and beat the entire game with him, because training your entire roster of characters 
will take hours and hours, maybe even days, to even have a slight chance against this preposterous game. And well, if you're into that kind of stuff, then of course you'll love it because these gameplay mechanics can easily become an addiction. Same case with its damn cousins Phantom Brave, the Hermuda Triangle and Makai Kingdom Chronicles of the Sacred Tomb, developed by the same people with strong influence from it, also available on the PS2. Hell, these three games can take this same spot for all I care, since they're all equally ridiculous when it comes to difficulty. Number 3. Baroque One of the most infamous RPGs of all time, being a roguelike type of game to make matters worse. You know, I like the concept in this game, the story and the idea behind a post-apocalyptic world and also its amazing soundtrack. But I never even managed to fully enjoy anything at all! Why? Because the game's extremely unforgiving, annoying and repetitive as hell! Well, isn't that the exact definition of roguelike RPGs? Every single time you die in this game, something that can happen anywhere at any time in the most unpredictable manner, you will lose everything. Items, levels, armor, everything! If it wasn't that freaking hard, I will put up with that and attempt to beat the game because that's what a damn roguelike game is all about. But these damn spikes and curves are beyond my comprehension. This is a game that, sadly, I cannot recommend to anybody. You know what? Just read the manga instead. That'll be a much pleasant experience, I'm sure. Number 2. Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter Another game that I can't recommend is this outrageous experiment by Capcom. The game that almost left the Breath of Fire franchise buried in a grave. It was such a nice paced and challenging turn-based series, but the fifth game, Dragon Quarter, had to come and ruin everything. Is it bad? No, it isn't, but it's definitely not a game for everybody. My main problem with this title, and the reason why it's so high on the list, at number two most specifically, it's because it's a game where you need to die in order to get better and progress at it. Yes, you heard that right. You need to die. You have to restart the game thanks to a stupid ass mechanic called the scenario overlay system carrying over items, equipment and skills. What is this, another roguelike RPG? With the one feature that kills the entire experience that will make you explode into a burst of total rage quit is the save feature. You have limited save tokens. That means there are no save points. That's right. Want me to go on? How about dying quickly after you transform into a dragon for a limited period of time? If time's up, guess what? You die and go back to your limited last save spot. Oh, and battles are also hard. Really hard. So it's not only its ridiculous and weird game design, it's also its major difficulty spikes. Yet to hell with this game. Number 1. Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne There's one title that beats every single one in this list, with apocalyptic infamy and overwhelming insanity, is Nocturne, also known as Lucifer's Call. That's right! The third Shin Megami Tensei in the series, and one of the best in my opinion, an exclusive for the PS2 that destroyed people's hopes of getting a solid entry into the franchise. Most of us went crying to the spin-offs like Digital Devil Saga or Devil Summoner that are still hard but nowhere near as impossible as this infernal title. Grinding and strategizing are the only two burps that will barely allow you to have a very, very minuscule chance. You need the right demons, with the right skills, and the right levels to beat some of the bosses. That includes one of the most infamous bosses of all time, Matador. Once you face this bastard, 
Every goddamn ordeal you face before in this game will feel infantile and childish. You will be defeated, left to think all your efforts were for nothing. And if you somehow miraculously defeat him, the game will only start getting worse. Frustration, rage quit, difficulty spikes and pet peeves, you've got a lot of everything here. Enough material to go on for a lifetime saying you beat this game, or just like the rest of us, admitting that you never did. Unlimited Saga If there had to be at least one honorable mention, then here's the biggest of them all. No other game deserved this title more than the abominable, atrocious and obnoxious Unlimited Saga. Is it more difficult than Nocturne? It can be, but only because of its absolutely terrible design. I need... I need to emphasize that. Terrible design as in one of the worst designs in the history of RPGs. Allegedly, once you get the gist of it, you start having some fun. That is, if by some Buddhist miracle you have the patience to barely grasp what the hell you need to do in this horrible piece of shit. I didn't, so I quit early and didn't reach the true hard part of it, because the hardest part is trying to understand this fucking game. Stay the hell away from it and play all the others in this list for a much better challenge. Okay guys, that is my list. Now don't take me wrong, most of these games are excellent, some of them are among my favorites, and some of them I think can be considered as among the best JRPGs on the system. Yes, they are hard, and I know I did a lot of ranting in this video, but that's because they put me through so much suffering and pain. Now, I'm just kidding. These games are brutally hard, but that doesn't make them bad. Most of them. You know, just stay away from Unlimited Saga. That one's a piece of trash. Anyway, all that is left is for you to share on the comment section below what are the hardest JRPGs on the PlayStation 2 that you've ever played. That's right. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!